Hi, my name is Jessie Christensen. I'm a research scientist at NASA's Exoplanet Science Institute and the deputy science lead of NASA's Exoplanet Archive. I'm really excited to be part of this 100th anniversary debate on life in the universe. How will humanity first discover extraterrestrial life? My belief is that it will be via biosignatures, and let me talk you through my arguments why. One of the things I'm most interested in is the demographics of planets in our galaxy, how they're distributed around. And one of the things we've discovered in the last 20 years is that exoplanets are incredibly common. Uh, we believe that most stars have exoplanets now. We're still working out how many planets are true Earth twins, so rocky planets in the habitable zones of stars like the Sun. I would guess the number is somewhere around 20 to 30 percent of stars like the Sun have a rocky planet like the Earth in the habitable zone, uh, but that number's still being worked out. Uh, this video is just showing over the last 20 years or so just how many planets we found and how they're distributed on the sky. You can see we found planets everywhere. And that's just our local solar neighborhood. If you extrapolate out, the galaxy is full of planets. And excitingly enough, the galaxy is full of rocky planets. So where do we find most of the rocky planets in the galaxy? It actually seems like they're mostly orbiting M dwarfs, the small, cool red stars that you know, comprise 75% of the stars in our galaxy. We think most M dwarfs hold, host one, if not more, small rocky planets. This is a fly-through of some of the rocky habitable zone planets around the small red star TRAPPIST-1, which hosts seven rocky planets, three of which we think are in the habitable zone. So that's exciting that there's a lot of rocky real estate around M dwarfs, since M dwarfs are so numerous in the galaxy. But there is a problem with M dwarfs, which is that they put out so much of their radiation, of their energy as, as high energy radiation, high energy particles, that we're not sure if rocky planets are in the habitable zones of these stars can actually support life, or at least life as we know it. Uh, so we don't know that it can't, but we're worried about it's a possibility that it can. Let's assume though that M dwarf planets in the habitable zone can host life. The James Webb Space Telescope, which is a six and a half meter infrared telescope, which is going to launch in the next year or so, should be able to observe the atmospheres of these planets, rocky planets around M dwarfs, and start looking for biosignatures. So these are markers of biological activity, and we're still looking for a smoking gun, like which molecule or combination of molecules really would definitively say that there's biological activity. You know, oxygen or oxygen and methane, some combination, some chemical disequilibrium that can only be maintained by life. That's the sort of thing we're looking for when we're looking for biosignatures. So if rocky planets around M dwarfs are habitable, my belief is that in the next decade, James Webb will find biosignatures around this planet, just because there's so many of them. Uh, and that's a really exciting prospect. If, on the other hand, it turns out that rocky planets around M dwarfs aren't habitable, all hope is not lost. Uh, NASA is currently studying missions for the next few decades, so 20 or 30 years from now, which would uh, be able to detect biosignatures on true Earth analogues. So these would be rocky planets in the habitable zones of stars like our Sun, so, so big yellow G stars that put out the sort of radiation that we know life can sustain because life is sustained it here on Earth. Uh, so this is something even much bigger than James Webb. So this was a concept for a 16 meter space telescope. This is the, a Louvois fly through. Uh, and Louvois and Habex are both being designed such that you could actually take the spectrum of a rocky planet like Earth in the habitable zone of a star like the sun. So if we can't find life around M dwarfs, then I think we can find it around sun like stars. We found it at least once. And if that's the case, then I think our first detection of extraterrestrial life is biosignatures in the 20 to 30 year time frame from now. So here's my credits for the videos. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, have fun with the debate.